guest this hour is Pete Bursich, who we welcome in here. Pete, former linebacker at Notre Dame, color analyst for the Vikings, kind enough to give us uh. from uh, from out in Minnesota. Well, let's. Would you see week one from the Vikes? Um, they they went to MetLife and. Sam Darnold got off to a really hot start. They put up 28 against the Giants and and yep. uh, really blew them, blew them out of their home stadium in week one. It yeah. looked impressive from afar. Yeah, it was – you don't, you never know how that, how that first game is going to go. Um, and, you know, I think they did a good job of, of keeping Daniel Jones from getting into any sort of a rhythm. And it's, 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 it's interesting because, you know, this is my 29th season doing this and – you know, you see quarterbacks like Rodgers and Favre and all, you know, a lot of great quarterbacks. And you might, you might get their timing off for a series or two, maybe a quarter if you're lucky, a half, but they always seem to get it back. And Daniel Jones just lost it. I mean, he never had it. It was one of the crazier things I think that I've, I've seen, but he had no semblance of a rhythm. Um, they probably ran him as much, if not more, than the Ravens did Lamar Jackson on the Thursday night game. So they're obviously not too worried about getting him hurt uh, with the restructuring of his contract. So, um, but the defense did a good job. You know, the defense, our defense, the front is is really based on stopping the run, which is going to be very very important. Uh, you know, this Sunday, obviously. Um, but they were. You know, we have some more experience at the cornerback positions with the Stephon Gilmore, um, Shaq, you know, it, it, Shaq Griffin. Um, some, you know, we really revamped the back end of our defense, at least at the corner position. And they were able to, you know, show some three deep and play cover two and, you know, show some show some three deep and play some man to man. I mean, they they mixed it up quite a bit. And I think that kept Daniel Jones off his game. So, um you know, they're going to have to continue, you know, continue to do that. Um, Van Ginkle played really, really well. He was, kind of, yeah. he was in the right place at the right time. It's kind of his thing. Grenard is always, is somebody that you're going to have to deal with. Um, so a lot of the free agents that we brought in on defense, they all showed up. And then offensively, I think Aaron Jones was a bit of a shot in the arm. Um, I mean, we went, I don't even know how many weeks last year before we had a rushing touchdown. I mean, the, the, the team, our team struggles, had struggled with the deep red zone runs. So first and goal from the five, let's say, or whatever. And then short yardage, third and one, fourth and one. We had a beat in Cincinnati. We had two shots to gain one yard, didn't get it done, ended up losing in overtime. Um, so, you know, Aaron Jones, I think, ha has fixed that. He's helped, he's helped that quite a bit. Um, you know, and Darnold settled in all right. I mean, JJ had a decent, you know, he had a he had a decent day. I think that's something that you're going to want to see that you know Kevin O'Connell's going to want to see more out of the offense is taking some shots deep. So, I got more. I can go on for no. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, seriously, we and I, I we <laughs> want more. We definitely want more. Pete Bursich with us has been the the Vikings uh, color commentator on the Vikings radio network since 2007. You remember him like I do, playing at Notre Dame. Uh, back in the day, uh, one of the hard hitting inside backers. Did you play with Zorich? Was Zorich on your squad? I played one. I played one year with with Zorich. You know, I'm from uh, the Joliet area, Chicago. Um, you know, he's he's a Chicago guy. You know, uh, there are a lot of guys. Oliver Gibson, um, uh, Bryant Young, who went to Bloom. He's in the NFL Hall of Fame. He was a he's a Chicago guy too. So one of know, my Stamps, favorite people in the yeah, world is Bby Stamps, man. Magala. Yeah, Bby is one. Of, he's one of the best. Uh, Stan Smigala, there were, there did Grunhard. There were a ton of Chicago guys that played, you know, high school football and then went on to, uh, went on to Notre Dame. So yeah, that was, it was, it was fun. I used to love one of my favorite matchups back in college football back in the day. And they, they discontinued the rivalry for a while, but Catholics versus convicts I yeah. mean, to me, yeah. Miami, Miami, Notre Dame was, was yeah. it. I mean, that was it. I don't care yeah. if it was in the orange bowl or in South bend. Those games it was were great dramatic. Game. And I and I love Miami. I got recruited by Miami. Um, um I did I disliked, I think we all did, but I know I did. I'd be disliked Florida State a lot more than we did Miami. Miami was just a fun rivalry. It was a great game. Um, a lot of great football. And, you know, 
the what we were told by Lou was that <laughs> you know it was the safety of the fans that was a concern and all that whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was yeah that was it was fun. Lou had some Lou had some zingers. He had some good ones. You know, he, he would talk about Catholics versus convicts and. He'd say, you know, that shirt's not exactly true because we're not all Catholics, right? And we, we'd all have to laugh. <laughs> ah, yeah, there you know, you go. We'd all have to laugh at his jokes because if, did, if we didn't, then he'd get pissed and we'd all have to run and, <laughs> you know, do whatever. So, um, but yeah, that was that was fun, man. What a fun, it, what a fun you, rivalry. Oh, my gosh. I love those games with Cleveland Gary in that game in South Bend. And oh, my God. There's so many good, so yeah. many good memories there. Um, I want to talk to you before we get in more into Vikings Niners the evolution of the linebacker position in the NFL, because you played in the league and Mm. now you're watching the league. And once upon a time, if you ran four, eight, uh, you could play linebacker in the NFL. Then it was like, there was a period where, man, you better run in the four sevens or they're going to, you know, isolate you against an athlete in space. And you're Mm. going to be out off the field. Now, if you don't have four or five speed and great instincts, it's 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 a movement position and the right. linebackers are getting smaller. They're looking more and more like the safeties of the of the 80s and 90s. Yep. What do you think of the evolution of the linebacker um, where the four the four nine Matt Millen, you know, with the big yeah. neck roll? Those guys. Yeah, those guys aren't out. Those guys, those guys couldn't play today or no, if they could, the game, they'd get they'd get burned in pass coverage. You know, I they it, it's guys now are trained for that right from day right. one so you know we didn't train that way so maybe if we all did we would be i don't know but the game the game is much more spread out now it's much more one-on-one in space um you know you don't see teams you know teams are running five-man fronts they have the hybrid outside defensive end slash linebackers you get three gigantic bodies in front and then the linebackers kind of just you know fill gaps in between um you don't see as many of them on the field, right? We used to have we used to have three, um, three starters, four D linemen, three linebackers. You go nickel, you'd bring. Now it, it it's basically, um, you know, four five D linemen and two linebackers on the field. That's it, and that's it at most. And you know, you even look at the Vikings with what we do with Josh Metellus. I mean, Josh Metellus is a really good football player, but he's not a deep half safety, right? right. He's not he's not a guy so that you're he's going like a to, blitzer. Isn't right. It? He, well, he's, he plays, he plays more of a nickel type and then he plays linebacker. It just depends on the personnel and where he lines up. And when you think of a, of a, of a nickel defender as, as a DB, the, the nickel is really a linebacker. They have linebacker drops, right? They're dropping to the flat, to the hook, to the curl, however, you know, depending on whatever coverage you're in. Um, so it's, it's not the same as a corner. It's very different from a safety. Um, and Metellus does that very, very well. And so, yeah, he, he's kind of like the, the evolution of that position as they're getting smaller and faster. Um, we do have, um, Ivan Pace, who's an undrafted rookie free agent, um, two years last year, uh, and he's going into second year, but he's, he's, he's a little guy. He's about six foot tall. Uh, but he, you know, he can thump and he, and he hits, he's very, very quick. He's very, very good in the running game. Blake Cashman's a guy that we brought in from, from Houston, who is very, very versatile, can run line games up front. He, he's Makes good at lots his, of tackles. His zone, yeah. His zone drops, um, not as physical as pace, but he has a, you know, a good skill set. So the position, yeah, the position is, is much less physical than it used to be. Um, I mean, the pads and things that they wear now, they, they'd never be able to make it back in the day with the fullback and the tight ends and everybody just pounding, you know, pounding power and lead ISO and all those different running games that we saw. It's more about movement and, you know, the, the, the size of the equipment shows it, the size of the players, the speed of the players. You have to be able to cover a running back in space now. You have to. They can isolate a line. If you got a linebacker that can't, you know, can't run, you're going to have a problem. It's if if you remember if you go back and watch the Rams when they played the Bengals in the Super Bowl, the Bengals were in a situation where they had two linebackers on the field all the time, and what the Rams did was they got those linebackers out in space, and they you yeah. know they got them covering wheel routes, they got them covering out of their comfort zone. They knew if they got man to man that they were going to have a linebacker on a skill position player. 
and to kind of warm out that way because, uh, you know, Cincinnati just wouldn't go dime. Anyway, I digress. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a movement game now. Um, Vikings have a three, four front, um, you know, Flores has got a 34 front and he's got Greenard. He's got really four, I, 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 four good rushers here. Greenard is a, you know, 26 and he may not be Daniil Hunter, but he's a hell of a player. Pat mm-hmm. Jones, the second, uh, had a couple sacks in this last game. Van Ginkle kind of reminds me of like a, you know, the Pat Beverly of the NFL. I mean, he's just annoying, but you know what? That's because he's yeah. good. You know, he's just yeah. a good player and he had a huge play in this game in week one. And then Dallas Turner was the highest defensive player drafted in the, in this last draft, great yeah. athlete, elite athlete, uh, out of Alabama. What do you think of that? Those four guys, because I mean, Trent is on one side. McKivitz is on the other side. Obviously McKivitz is probably the guy they're going to have more success against than Trent, yep. but Trent Trent's missed all summer. Played great on Monday night, but how do you see the matchup on the perimeter on that on the uh, up front? Well, I think the the challenge is going to be to get this to get the Niners in a third and medium to long situation. Um, and that's why I go back to just to just stop in the run. If if you allow the four, if you, if we allow your team to just run the ball, they will, and they'll just run it and run it and run it. I mean, they it, it's it's. It's uh, it's unique that way. It doesn't matter who's a running back, right? They're just gonna, they're just gonna, you know, run the run the thing over and over again. Um, but when we can, when we can get a team that's inefficient or make them inefficient on first and second down, then you can bring those athletes out there, right? You can, you can put a Pat Jones out there with a Grenard, um, you know, with a Dallas, Tur- you know, with Dallas Turner and run games with those guys you can do a lot of different things because those guys are so versatile right and i think that's what flores loves about you know uh you talk about josh metellus or any of these guys they can do a lot of different things harrison smith um you know and you know just make some tweaks and changes week in week out and saying you know this week the this guy's gonna blitz this week you're not gonna blitz and you know, try to figure out how teams are going to turn protections and do those things and, and, and work off of that. So the versatility is very, very important. Um, but we have to get to a situation. If we're third and two, third and three all night long, you know, and then you're going to have, you know, Harrison Phillips in there and, you know, other, the big guys. Um, and you're not going to be able to get that, be that creative. So that's that's just my my main concern going into this game is, you know, you 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 have to you have to put this game, um, you know, in the hands of Brock Purdy and make him throw. That's your best chance of winning. I'm still I'm not saying that's how you win. I'm just saying right. the best chance you have to win is to limit the runs as much as you can by either getting a big lead, which doesn't happen much, um, or just stopping the run or being efficient on first and second down. You have to tackle really well. Um, you know, obviously you guys know about run after the catch and, you know, you watch Debo Samuel and the most amazing part of Debo Samuel is he very rarely is on the ground at the end of the play. Even when the whistle blows, he's usually, you know, man finds a way to get out of bounds or is, is still on his feet. It's so hard to bring him down to the ground. So you have to tackle very well and don't give up any, cause that, that extra yard or two that you give up, if you don't tackle well, that adds up, right? It's third and five instead of third and eight. And that in a game like this is, is a huge difference maker, but um, yeah, you have to find a way to make Purdy get down the field, make him, you know, throw the ball more than 25 times. <laughs> right. Yeah. You gotta, right. you gotta, you gotta find a way to do that. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you know, if the Niners have the balance, then it's going to be, a, it's going to be rough. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, Nick Bosa, when we were talking to him today, made the point that and team and guys rarely make these statements, but he made the statement. He's like, this Vikings team's a whole lot better than the team we played last week. You know, <laughs> uh, he made that point. Um, and so it's rare for players to make that kind of a statement. But if if Jordan Mason and the 49ers average, you know, Mason averaged yeah. five, three a carry. If the Niners average four, seven a carry, if they average four, seven a carry again, that's going to be a, a good thing for them. How good do you think this Viking defense is against the run? They shut down the Giants. They held Singletary to three seven a carry, and the Giants to three yeah. and a half yards a carry as a team. Um, yeah, and, and again, I think I think 
schematically, um, you know, Flores with, with what he's doing. And it's very unique. He's really, it's really, I don't know if there's another defense like it with, with um, how they do their front. Sometimes we do five man fronts and some things that everybody else does. Um, but it was, ba- it's really based on st- a college type system at Boston college and stopping the run. Um, so we're, I think we will uh, dedicate as many people we need to, to the line of scrimmage to get that done. Right. Uh, and, you know, that'll be a mix up because you won't, you won't see the same thing the entire night. Um, you know, defensively, you know, we have Jerry Tillery, who you guys I think are kind of familiar with. He was, uh, you know, out with the chargers in LA yep. and then uh, with the Raiders, um, you know, he's, he's a very talented guy. He's trying to find his way. I think he's getting a shot, you know, and then you have Harrison Phillips, um, you know, so those guys up front, you know, we don't have Dexter Lawrence. That was the, <laughs> that guy, he's my, he's probably my favorite player in the NFL. He's just, you don't see guys with that size be able to move like he does. <laughs> he's a condominium um, so, complex. That's what yeah, he is. He's yeah. A- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so you, you know, you get someone like Jake Brent, you know, Jake Brendel and you look at, at that position and say that, you know, I think that might be an opportunity, but if, again, you guys are running the ball constantly, you know, how, you know, how are you going to make, put him in a position where he has to pass off a line game or a line stunt, right? And the more of the Vikings defense can do that, I think the more successful they're going to be. So, I think you think yeah, Addison is going to go in this game, Pete? Is Pete, you think Addison goes? I mean, I know he's dinged up, but um, um, he's also a tremendous talent. I mean, you know, he, he is. Yeah, he is. And we, you guys, saw some of that last year. And yeah. I think what you guys saw last year was probably my favorite part of Addison is that, um, you know, he's 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 got some he's got some toughness to him, right? He he, he uh, had a had an interception taken out of his hands, and then he comes back and you know does the same thing and scores a touchdown. And I think him, he is a, he's such a good route runner. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we had him, um, uh, you know, we had him in a situation yeah, last week when you have him on the, when you have him on the field next to JJ it poses problems because you're going to want to maybe do a, a, you know, corner and a safety rolled over a guy, guy and a half, you know, two or one and a half guys on JJ. And that leaves, that leaves him Addison one-on-one. And, you know, Addison just did, you know, does a great job with route running. So he's so hard to cover and he's a guy that you can go to. So, you know, if we don't have him on the field, I think in a game like this, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a big difference maker. Pete, last one for you. And we appreciate your time. And it's uh, awesome to to catch up with you again. Uh, Shanahan was talking today uh, down in Santa Clara and he, he was asked about the Vikings offensively and he's like, you know, offensively, it's it's a balanced offense. He's like, you'll see a little bit of everything. He says, you'll see a little hurry up. Uh, they'll go mm-hmm. tempo. Um, he says, it's player friendly. It's a player friendly scheme. He says, you're going to see the play action game. You're going to see the bootleg game. Uh, he says, it's a very sound scheme. How much yeah. do you think we'll see from um, the Vikings on Sunday as, as far as, you know, hurry up and tempo? How Do they utilize that in week one? Because um, uh, teams have done that to the Niners to some degrees of success. Yeah, I mean, I think it's always something that they're going to – here's the issue with hurry up, though. You When you face an offense who last week had the ball for over 38 minutes, right, and you look at that stretch from the end of the second half going into the third quarter when you guys had the – had the ball all but four seconds. It was like 12 and a half or almost 12 and a half, almost 13 minutes right. where the Jets had the ball for four seconds. You can't just go out there and go hurry up because what if you go three and out? You're going to tick, what, 12 seconds off the clock and then put your defense right back out there? So you have to right. be very prudent with with when you choose to do that. Um, if you got them in, you know, so you have to pick the situation. If you have the right defensive personnel on the field for what you want, you want to keep those guys on there, you can do that now against the giants. I think they did a lot of that to slow down, you know, Dexter Lawrence and some of the, some of the defensive front uh, wear those guys out a little bit. Cause we knew we matched up well against their DBs. So the tempo part of it, I think was, was used in, in that respect, uh, you know, against the giants. Yeah. T- with the time of possession, the way it goes, uh, you really are going to have to, you're going to have to move the chains at least once before you get into, I think into that rhythm. Uh, or try to, you know, at, at hurry up because, um, like I said, it's it's so hard 
to get your offense off the field. So it's so efficient that um, you can't risk, you know, letting you guys have the ball for 12 minutes, 12 of the first 15 minutes of a game, because then you guys will just keep running it and run it and eventually wear everybody out, wear us out. Yeah, Pete, great stuff, man. We, uh, we're we glad that we caught up with you. Good luck with the high school season this year. And <laughs> yeah, and, thank you. And, uh, and it's always great to chop it up with you. And hopefully uh, Niners, Vikings, lock horns in the playoffs, and we can uh, we can get you back on. We'd love to, to hey, do no it one again. Picked, and, nobody picked us to go to the playoffs. So if it's like if, if we make it, I think, you know, we'll be – We'll be very happy with that, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good football game for a noon Sunday game. I think it's going to be a good one. 